I want to insult your intelligence. The announcements are on the screen. But I just want to emphasize there's a lot going on in December, as you can tell. Uh, if there's anything that we overlooked, please let us know and we can add that to the list. But December the 12th, we'll talk more about it at the end of the service. December the 12th gives us a chance to offer some missions and fellowship. So we need, some, uh, need to be inquiring about that. We've been asked to host the Lord's Supper for the county for... Uh, for Jefferson County as a drive through scene and we're going to give out the Lord's Supper cups and information about the church and information about the Lord's Supper. So be in prayer for that and how you can help or just be ready to, to say yes when asked. We are entering into the Advent season. You know what the word Advent means? It means coming. Uh, something's a coming. And of course, we know that, uh, that Jesus is a coming, and I pray that you're anticipating his, his birth because it leads to His death, to His burial, and ultimately to His resurrection. Our Advent wreath reminds us of the outreaching of celebration of Jesus' birth. The evergreens remind us of God's everlasting love. It's round in the form of a circle to symbolize God's eternal love. And as we light the candles, each one of them stands for the light of Jesus that He brought into a dark world. Each Sunday, we will light a different candle representing something that is in store for us. Today's purple candle will be hope. Let's stand as we do a responsive reading taken from Psalms 130, verse number 5, and then Psalms 15, 13. We can follow along. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. O oh, Israel, put your hope in the Lord. The candle of hope prepares us for Christ's coming. Our hearts glow with the light of hope. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as, as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We wait with hope. Come on, Lord Jesus. Let's stand as we sing. Good morning. Welcome to the Christmas season. Yay! We made it another year, right? <laughs> so we're going to start out this morning with Go Tell It on the Mountain. It's in the blue book, uh, um, page 258, or I believe it's going to be on the screen as well. <clears throat>
up with this one, and he knows who he is. <laughs> Special in a way. So 750 Peace Like a River. It's been a long time since we did this. I guess you're not. Yeah. You need to do your. Tom's going to do the motions because, and all the kids know it. Yeah, Gracie's already doing it. So let's go. <laughs> the first candle of the Advent now. Lighting a candle is a simple yet profound act. It is a testimony to the power of light over darkness. The light of just one candle can push away the darkness. As we light this first candle of Advent, we begin our journey to Christmas. The first candle of Advent is called the hope or prophecy candle. As we anticipate Christmas, let us remember those who first spoke the promise of the coming of Christ's child. Micah 5, 2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, through you are small among the clans of Judah. Out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. In Isaiah 7, 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. In Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, ever establishing and upholding it 
with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Like the prophets of old, God's people are called to have hope in God through the birth, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping our promise to send a Savior. We also thank you for the promise that, we, that, we, that he will return again to take us to our home in heaven. Amen. Amen. Good. I like it. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that.
overseas missionaries that we support, named for Lottie Moon. And as we start this season, um, our goal is $3,000. So we will be taking the offering until we reach that goal. So however long that takes. So kids go ahead and lock the, the ring. Just a second. Okay, Christmas is coming soon, right? So around our house, we got together some things and we started getting some stuff ready for Christmas. So in our house, as you see, we've got a what? What do I have here? A wreath. A wreath. And as you know, my husband is a big Cowboys fan. So we've got a Cowboys. Okay. We have got <laughs> we have got a countdown to Christmas calendar. We're counting down the days till Christmas. We've got Christmas soap. We've got Christmas candy. We've got Christmas to dec uh, ornaments to decorate our trees with. We've got greenery that goes around our house and outside. We've got Christmas lights. Christmas candles, we've got all sorts of things to get ready for Christmas because it's coming soon, isn't it? It's easy to tell. We see the signs of Christmas all around us. For instance, look at our church. Look at all the decorations. Look at the pretty candles that we have in the windows and also the Christmas tree decorations. And now we have the Lottie Moon Christmas wreath. We have lots of things that are in our church and our beautiful Advent wreath that was made. So these are all signs that Christmas is coming. We see Christmas direct decorations on our houses. We hear Christmas songs on the radio, and we see commercials even on TV and more. If we didn't have all of those things to remind us that Christmas was coming, how could we tell that Christmas was coming if we didn't have all these things? Anybody have any idea how we could tell Christmas was coming? Ethan, how could we tell? Okay, Alexa, Alexa, you could ask it or we could look at a calendar. Good, okay. Google it. Google it. The weather's changing. Oh, the weather starts to change. So we might know Christmas is coming by the weather. Any other ideas, Gracie? Seasons. Okay, the different seasons. We know that winter is when Christmas is coming. Okay, Andy? The elves. Oh, elves, okay. We start seeing elves, okay. Lots of things that we can see and we can tell that Christmas is coming. 2,000 years ago, there was no TV. And there was no radio announcing that a child would be born and that he would be the savior of the world. When Jesus was born, very few people even knew about it. But it was an event that God had promised and it was foretold by prophets many years before. Many people had been looking forward to the coming of the savior, but they didn't know exactly when he was coming. We're entering the Christmas season of Advent Advent means, Advent means the coming of something very, very important. It's a period of time when we look forward to the celebration of Jesus' birth at Christmas. And we also look forward to Jesus' return. Jesus promised to come again. And we look forward to it. Just as the people did 2,000 years ago, we look forward to the Savior being born. Now, no one knows exactly when Jesus will come back. It isn't marked on a calendar, but we're watching and waiting expectedly. As we prepare to celebrate the birthday of our Lord and Savior, let's also be sure that we prepare for his exciting return. And in Luke, 
It says, I'm going to make it down just a little bit. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. With these things begin to take place. Stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for this special time of year and its importance and its meaning to us. We praise you for keeping your promise to send a Savior who will come back again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. And as you all come, I've got you all a little something to decorate Christmas, but it's edible, so you can take it back and eat sing, it, right? okay? You gonna sing? Oh, I will give it to you. I'm sorry, after we sing. We Let's sing, sing first. first. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I got you some little Christmas balls. Does anyone have a word for the Lord or a special song this morning that they'd like to share? Good to see you, Bella. There you go. There you go. Got it. Yay, Bella's here. Okay, preacher, I guess it's up to you. happen hope waiting for something to happen what is your hope what is your hope let me ask you this what is your hope in I'm not talking about the kind of hope I hope my team wins the game <sighs> hope I got enough gas to get to the gas station I hope I get this job <sighs> Oh, I hope she stares at me at lunch today. Oh, I hope that I hope that he asked me to go to the movies this weekend. I'm not talking about 
that kind of hope. Talking about something concrete. Talking about something that is solid. Talking about something that has lasted and tested through time. Time and time again, we have tried to test hope. Time and time again, we have put our hope in something. And every time you put your hope and faith in something, one of two things happen. You either get disappointed or you get a blessing. If you put your things and hope of this world, it won't last long. You will always be let down. I'm talking about the kind of things that has been tested and proven. Talking about the kind of things where our, our founding fathers and never forget our founding mothers and never forget those praying grandmothers. Talking about that they have tested and proven. Hebrews talks about this. Tested and proven. The hope that is everlasting. And the hope that can only be found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 talks about the story. We're going to turn there, by the way. Matthew chapter 11 talks about the story of John the Baptist being in prison. And you know that John the Baptist was, was, was held up in prison for testifying and preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was a way maker. John the Baptist prepared the way. John the Baptist made it possible for Jesus. Yeah, that's right. His own very cousin, God used to provide a way. For you see, John talked about it. And he got the people's ears turned towards heaven. And then Jesus came in with His own power and the power of His heavenly Father and just displayed the beautiful presentation of the gospel starting with his birth and ending with his resurrection and in the meantime taught us how to live showed us how to live and brought forth an everlasting hope let's stand in honor reading God's Word uh, Matthew chapter 11 I'm going to start in verse 2 and I will end in verse number 6 and when John heard from prison the works of Christ he sent two of his disciples and said unto them, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John these things which you do hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf to hear, the dead to be raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Verse number 6 says, And blessed is he who shall ever not be offended in me. Let us pray. Most loving, gracious God, hide me behind the cross. Make it that they don't see me, but that they see a risen Savior that offers them true, sustaining hope. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. There's hope in Jesus Christ. There's hope in the name of Jesus. Jesus has been performing miracles. Jesus and John were kind of going simultaneously. John was ending his ministry and Jesus was just getting started. Jesus had just introduced the twelve and it was time to go. It was go time. It was go time. It was time to, to, to quit talking and start doing. It was time that a lot of us quit talking and start doing. And that's where Jesus and John were. They didn't, they, Jesus I guess, it's not about John, but they had just decided that it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. So Jesus goes all about the city, receiving sight to the blind. Are you blind today? Are you blind today? There's two kinds of blindness here. Jesus didn't spell it out for us, but we know there's two kinds of blindness. The spiritual blind, and that'd be bad. The physical blind, and that'd be bad too. I couldn't see these beautiful flowers. The stage is beginning to be transformed for the, for the Christmas play. 
We know we just finished the fall leaves and most of the leaves are gone and we would miss that beautifulness if you had no physical sight. But to be spiritually blind would be far more worth. See, if a blind man, and we all know that one or two blind men or women, let me back up on that. If a blind person puts their trust and faith in Jesus, they will get to receive their sight and they will see Jesus in all of His glory in the vast of heaven. But I guess I could use a quote from Jesus here, Woe to those spiritually that are blind. Spiritually that are blind, you have no hope in ever seeing. You have no hope of ever getting to rest in the presence of heaven unless you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You see, Jesus is our hope this morning. Jesus is our hope to be able to see. He goes on to say, the lame will walk. I'm going to start singing here in a minute because I got the, that song in my head. The lame will walk. There's two kinds of lames here. The lame, physical lame that has... I was, went to grew up with a guy and I don't know why it was just his fortune, not mine. His left hip was about an inch and a half shorter than his right hip. I don't know. He had to wear a special shoe, but he still walked with a limp. It wasn't fair. Life didn't treat him fair. But one thing I'll say about him, he didn't roll over and, and give in to it. He carried on. He, met, he went on and he's still a productive citizen in life. He just walks with a little limp. But let me use a slang term here and twist this lame around just a little bit. What if we were a lame Christian? What if we were not a good Christian? The word lame can be interpreted like a lame duck. What's a lame duck? It's deer season. A lame deer laying in the field. What happens to a lame deer laying in the field? Eventually, something bigger and stronger comes by and takes it for dinner and eats it and consumes it. Are we lame Christians in the fact of we're just laying here? I've got mine. I'm good. I know about this hope preacher. I ain't even listening to you. I got you tuned out. I don't need to hear it. I know about the hope. Well, first of all, it's all good for us to hear about the hope. But are we a lame Christian in the fact of we're not telling the good news of Jesus Christ? Folks, it's Christmas season. We get to experience the birth of Jesus Christ. And what a blessing it is. And what hope that we have in Him. Let me ask you this. Are you a lame Christian in the sense that you're not doing anything for the cause of Christ? The lame Christian that just lays there cuddled up and say, I've got mine and my hot cup of cider on my couch and my warm fuzzy blanket and my Hallmark Channel movies. Yes, I like the Hallmark Channel movies. Yes, I like sitting on the couch with my warm cider. And yes, I love my warm blanket, okay? But that is not what I'm called to be. I am not called to be a sacred sitter. I am called to go out and tell the good news of Jesus Christ and to offer hope to a lost and dying world. And you know what? You are too. The Bible says, go and make disciples. It didn't say, sit at home, drink your hot cider and post on Facebook. Although that's kind of fun to do. But if you're spending more time doing that, then you are sowing the gospel seeds. Then we need to just check ourselves. And we don't need to be a lame duck or a lame duck Christian. Are you lame today? There's hope. There's hope for you. There are those that are leprosy were cleansed. What about you? Leprosy at this time was probably the worst thing a person could have. It was a sign of uncleanliness. And matter of fact, law prohibited you from going out in public. Of course, you know the open sores. And even if you had them covered up, you still were not allowed to go out just because... Maybe it's because of the severity of the disease. Maybe there's something inside of you that's not clean. Maybe there's something inside of you 
that's a little bit dirty. Maybe there's something inside of you keeping you from going out and telling the good news of Jesus Christ. I rest in the fact today, church, there's hope. There's hope. There's hope in the Lord and His name is Jesus. There's hope in the Lord and His name is Jesus. There's hope in the Lord and His name is Jesus. Maybe you're a little bit dirty. Maybe you're like the rest of us. You want to know the good news is? I was a little dirty. I was a little dirty. But praise be to God, I not only took a physical bath, but I was dirty spiritually. I had to take a spiritual bath. I had to surrender my heart and life to Jesus Christ. And you know what I miss about all the old things that I used to do? You know what I miss about being dirty? Get ready for this one? N-O-T-H-I-N-G. I miss nothing about being dirty. I miss nothing about not being a Christian. Matter of fact, church, I've gained a whole bunch. I've gained a whole bunch. I gained you all. <laughs> yeah, you all gained me. Help y'all. We all gained. We all gained. I don't miss the old things that I used to do. Not one bit. <laughs> I didn't have a pretty blonde wife when I didn't surrender my heart and life to Jesus. I didn't have two beautiful daughters. I was lost like a ball in high weeds. But you know what? When I found the Lord, everything started working out. Oh, yes, that's right. There's still bad days. That's right. There's still hard times. That's right. I still get a little dirty. Yeah, I still mess up. I still make sins. I'm not perfect. Anybody think you've got a perfect preacher? See me after church and I'll prove to you I'm not. Or talk to my wife and kids. They'll let you know, okay, I'm not perfect. But the difference between me and the rest of the world, I have hope. The difference between you and the rest of the world. I have a concrete hope. You have a concrete hope. You have a concrete hope that when something doesn't go right, when things don't go your way, when you do mess up, when you do stub your toe at 3 o'clock in the morning, when you do not get that promotion, when your neighbor mows grass on your side of the yard, or when your neighbor drives through your yard, or when your neighbor does something to make you mad, or your co-worker loses their temper, or your co-worker tells that dirty joke, and you succumb to that, and you give in to that, and you begin to talk, and, and you chatter it up, and you fall into it. There's a beautiful thing called grace. There's a beautiful thing called forgiveness. And that can only be found in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Where's your hope today? Are you a little dirty? Who's willing? Don't, don't, it's a rhetorical question. Don't raise your hands. Who's willing to show and who's willing to confess that they're a little dirty this morning? Oh, you might not be dirty this morning because you read your prayers and you said your Bible. You might not be, a, I said that right. You might not be a little bit dirty this morning. But maybe over Thanksgiving break, you were a little bit dirty. Maybe last week, in anticipation of all the hustle and bustle, especially if you work retail, you probably got a little bit dirty. Who's willing to admit that they're a little bit dirty? But who's willing to admit that there's a man named Jesus that get, forgives us of our sin? And there's a man named Jesus that gives us a little bit of grace. Actually, a whole lot of grace. There's a man named Jesus that provides our one true hope. What about it, church? Are you willing to admit you're dirty? But are you willing to testify to the name of Jesus Christ? It's okay to get your hands dirty. Little boys, there's just a few of them here. I'll, I'll be your parent just for a minute. It's okay to get your hands dirty. Little girls, it's okay to dig in that dirt and get your hands dirty. It's okay, boys and girls, as long as you don't got your Sunday best on. If you got your Sunday best on, I'm going to get in trouble. It's okay to jump in a mud puddle. It's okay to get a little bit dirty. But it's also great for you to wash your hands. It's also great for you to clean up. It's not okay, though, for us to knowingly sin. Knowingly jumping into a mud puddle is one thing. Knowingly sinning is not. But I know a man named Jesus that will forgive you of your sins whether you knowingly do it or not. But remember, when you knowingly sin and He forgives us, that's not grace. Knowingly sinning 
or not knowingly sinning and Him forgiving us is grace. God offers grace. There's hope. There's hope for your dirtiness. There's hope for your uncleanliness. And that's in the hope of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our true Lord and Savior. The deaf will hear. The deaf will hear. And again, y'all get it. There's two kinds of deafs. There's two kinds of deafs. Those that are physically deaf, and that would be horrible. That would be horrible. I grew up with a, with a gentleman that was, his dad was deaf, and it was bad. And I, we thought one time that he couldn't hear what we were saying. And he couldn't hear what we were saying, but he could hear the vibrations of our voice. And uh, we got a little scolded that one time, and we learned a quick lesson. But the deaf will hear when they put their hope and faith in Jesus Christ. But what about you, solid Christian? What about you? Are you deaf this morning? Are you deaf this morning? Are you spiritually deaf this morning? When the Lord listens, do we, when the Lord speaks... Do we listen? When the Lord speaks, do we listen? When the Holy Spirit prompts our heart, Christian, are we listening? Or are we spiritually deaf to the point to where we have toned out any possible thing? Are you deaf? There's hope. Are you deaf? There's hope in Jesus. He goes on to say, Jesus goes on to say, The dead are raised. Are you dead this morning? You know where I'm going. There's two kinds of deads. The spiritual dead and the physical dead. Let me look, make sure. I did know of a guy that died in church one time. Okay. There's nobody dead this morning. So are we spiritually dead, church? Are we spiritually dead? There's hope in the name of Jesus Christ. He says the good news is proclaimed to the poor. This is not a monetarily poor. This is not how much money or how little money you have in the bank. This goes back to Jesus' very first sermon, Matthew chapter 5. What was it? The Sermon on the Mount. When He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. He didn't say a word about you being physically poor. He talked about the poor in spirit. Where's your spirit, Christian? Where's your spirit today? Is it poor? Maybe you're just a little bit dirty. Maybe you've lost a sense of hope this morning. Maybe things of the world have got you down. Maybe things of the world have a reason for you to lose a little hope this Christmas season. But rest assured, things of this world will pass away. And in a moment, and in a twinkling of an eye, it'll all be changed. We've lost our loved one, we miss our loved one, and we feel that our earthly hope is gone. It's not gone, you just got to learn to readjust. Maybe it feels like it's gone, you just got to learn to readjust. But if we put our trust and our hope and our faith in Jesus Christ, all the questions will be made new. And if you're worried about how long you're going to be away from your loved one, the Bible says something like, a thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. Don't worry about it. In this theory of time, it's going to be a blink of an eye. Everybody blink your eye. Everybody look at me, eyes up, and I just blink them one quick time. One quick time. In the theory of eternity, that's how quick you'll be in the presence of God. And it'll last forever. How long is eternity? I'm glad you asked. It's, for, it's forever. 
the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Maybe you're a lost Christian this morning. Maybe you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Today be the day that you accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. And what a blessed time. What a better time than today to accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. There is hope for you, lost person. And then, maybe there's hope for us Christians that get a little weak in the Spirit, that get a little poor in the Spirit. There's hope for us today. There's hope in the, thing, in the, in the person of Jesus Christ. Let me wrap it up this morning. There's hope in Jesus. Let me go back to my first question. What's your hope? Where's your hope today? Never give up on your friends and family. As long as there is breath, there is hope. Don't give up on your friends that are lost. Don't give up on your family that is lost. And don't you dare give up on yourself. As long as there's breath, there's hope. There's hope in Jesus. Hope in Jesus. Hope, a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. Hope, waiting for something to happen. My hope is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Where's your hope? As we enter into the Christmas season, do you have the hope of Jesus Christ? Do you have the hope of Jesus Christ? Then what are you doing about it? It's Christmas time. We get together and we'll have meals and we'll cook. Oh, did you make that? That's a good. Can I have that recipe? Yeah, I'll get you that recipe. No, we're never going to take them that recipe because we don't want nobody to cook it like I can. Okay? I ain't talking about that kind of sharing. I'm talking about the kind of sharing that it's a lost and dying world, church. It's a lost and dying world. It's a hopeless world. You know why it's a hopeless world? Because things in this world will fade away. Maybe your favorite president got elected. You know what? Your favorite president's no longer in office. Maybe your favorite president got elected now. You know what? Your favorite president ain't going to be in office in a couple of years. Thanks for not saying amen to that. There's no hope in this world. It's a lost and dying world. But there is hope in Jesus Christ. And it's time for us Christians to stand up and boldly proclaim that Jesus is the hope. There's hope in Jesus. Do you know hope today? Do you know hope today? If you don't know hope, then hang around after church or during the invitation Come down and talk to me. Maybe you're a saved Christian, but you've lost your way a little bit. Come to the altar and leave it on the altar. Or, or see me after church and we'll talk in private. Maybe you're the rock solid Christian this morning. Maybe you've got it made. Maybe you know where you, maybe you are where you are and you know where you are and you know where you're supposed to be. then carry the light of hope this year. Carry the light of hope this year. in standing for a time of invitation.
We're going to sing uh, page 260 in the blue book. Thank you for being with us today, church. Thank you for being here today. It's good to see your smiling faces. It's good to see these singing kids. It's good to see these visitors. And it's good to see the home folk. Thank you for being here. We've got a lot going on this year. Don't forget, don't forget to be in prayer for something that you can get involved with. And most importantly, don't forget to share the good news of Jesus Christ. You see the beautiful decorations, and I talked to Joyce a couple of weeks ago, and I said that somebody wanted to do this, and Joyce said, good, and I don't have to fool with it. Not that she would, not, she would totally not care to do that. But with that said, uh, I would like to introduce Michelle and Joe Voggett. Does that pronounce it right? All right. Come on. They've been coming for six months, maybe, I don't know, I'd have to look back and see. But they've been coming for several months. And they've desired to make a membership to join Deep Springs Baptist Church. Joe coming on a letter from... Mate One Missionary Baptist, Mate One Missionary Baptist Church. And Michelle, who by the way, you'll learn, spells her name totally different than Michelle. But it's really, to me, it's the way it's pronounced. But... Uh, Michelle will be coming on Statement of Faith, and we will take care of that at a business meeting, a more, formal, a more formal time. But what's the pleasure of bringing Joe and Michelle Vaggett? Vaggett, yeah. Vaggett. all right. <laughs> bringing Joe and Michelle Vaggett as potential members of Deep Springs Baptist Church. Uh, in all, in, uh, uh, all in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. We're going to you have a seat. They'll come by and give you the good hand of fellowship. So you just wait right there. Thank you all. It's been a good day, church. 
but it's just beginning. We've been here together with a bunch of believers. We're about to enter into a mission field with a bunch of unbelievers, a bunch of lost people, a bunch of people that need to hear the hope of Jesus Christ. It does no good to stay with us. It does no good if we keep it to ourselves. We must be the light to a lost and dying world. Be blessed, stay well, and serve on, church. Serve on.